Yes, sir. We're home free on this one. RSVP now today. Hunter. What price for giving an absurd send-off to a writer who cherished the absurd? Well, a clean three million, if you're Johnny Depp. But if you're not, hear this. The funeral of Depp's dead friend formed part of a list of ostentatious spending that was included in a lawsuit by his ex-managers, who claimed it all led him to the brink of financial ruin. But for the pirate star, nothing is worth more than a good friendship. All I'm doing is trying to make sure his last wish comes true, Depp said at the time his friend passed on. I just want to send my pal out in the way he wants to go out. So who was this friend who bent so much to Depp? Let's find out. Johnny Depp shocked the world when he spent a skin-stretching three million blasting Hunter S. Thompson's ashes out of a cannon. Thompson's ashes were fired from a cannon that was placed atop a 153-foot tower shaped like a double-thumbed fist clutching a peyote button. The funeral was attended by Senator John Kerry, Jack Nicholson, John Cusack, Bill Murray, Benicio Del Toro, Sean Penn, Josh Hartnett, Ralph Steadman, and more. Amid years of strange, unconventional friendship, Johnny Depp and the late Hunter S. Thompson developed a relationship built on trust, love, and admiration. It was back in 1998 when Thompson's iconic piece of gonzo journalism, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, was adapted into a film by director Terry Gilliam. The high-profile project, which went on to be hugely successful at the box office, starred Johnny Depp in the lead role. From that moment onwards, he and Thompson developed a close understanding. The pair would regularly meet at Thompson's farm to chew the fat, shoot his guns, and talk about literature, life, and other musings. It was once said that Depp was the one to encourage Thompson to publish his novella, The Rum Diary. Thompson was hypersensitive in Depp's words. Whatever his intake was, was his intake. But if you were prepared to go that extra mile, he would stop you just to make sure, he added. Thompson, who eventually shot himself, age 67, had devised an elaborate funeral to which Depp helped fund, a project rumored to have cost in excess of $3 million. All I'm doing is trying to make sure his last wish comes true, said Depp at the time. I just want to send my pal out the way he wants to go out. How did he want to go out? By being blasted out of a cannon while Norman Greenbaum's Spirit in the Sky and Bob Dylan's Mr. Tambourine Man played in the background, of course. He loved explosions, Thompson's widow Anita said after the event. After Thompson's passing, Depp said he still feels the writer around him every single day and that he's aware of how special their relationship was. While exploring their friendship, we found some video footage of a young Depp reading aloud some letters Thompson had sent him over the years. The clips are a real treat and being Hunter S. Thompson, probably not suitable for work. Their friendship was special. Depp once invited his other long-term friend Marilyn Manson to his Hollywood home while Thompson was visiting. The loud sound of a bar below the house irritated Thompson, who threatened to fire at the patrons. The three decided to leave. They went to Depp's star on the walk of fame and decided to urinate and defecate on it. However, none of them could complete the effort on the spot. Also, both Thompson and Depp hailed from the state of Kentucky. The actor was born in Owensboro and the writer was from Louisville, but Thompson said they'd both been spurned by their own people. Thompson even called Depp Colonel after he nominated Depp to become an honorary Kentucky Colonel. Over the course of their tenure friendship, Depp and Thompson became very close. The actor initially saw Thompson as a father figure or mentor of sorts, but he ultimately decided they were more like brothers. So yeah, Depp had every right to spend millions of dollars on his best friend's last wishes. And that's it from us today. Until next time, bye!